Welcome to Hashtag 52 Boundaries. And this week we are talking about working with your life partner. And I am so delighted to have with me Coach Harlan Hammock, who is a business and leadership coach, a speaker and author, and the host of the podcast, The Courage to Lead, which I have had the privilege of being on. So I'm very happy that we're doing this the other way around and having a conversation now about boundaries, which is mm. somewhat related to leading, isn't it? Absolutely. It's good to be with you. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah. So welcome. And um, we are we both have experience working with our partners. And so we thought it would be a good way to just talk about what is involved when you work with your partner. What kind of boundaries do you need to actually discuss? Do you actually discuss boundaries or do you just go with the flow? What is your experience? You've done this much longer than I have. A long time. My wife and I met and uh, we started working together at a consulting company. And uh, take it back even further than that. When I first met her, I was a a, a temporary because I had just moved to the Atlanta area. She was a training manager at a company and they needed somebody to write their training materials. And so I came in for an interview and she started flirting and I started flirting back and uh, I started working for her, writing her training material. And about six months later, she fired me. And I go, what What did I do? Why are you firing me? And she goes, well, we can't date if I'm your boss. And I said, okay, <laughs> that works for me. So she helped me find another consulting job. And uh, yeah, fast forward a couple of years, we started working together at a consulting company. And then I started our own consulting company, I before E. And she came to work. So we, we've we been working together since about 2000, I guess. Wow. Um, Sometimes on the same project, a lot of times on different projects. So we would fly out to different companies, work during the week, then fly home and meet at the airport and come home and do laundry. Um, but there were a lot of times where we worked on the same project. Mm -hmm. And that posed some problems, not really problems. I guess they weren't too bad. Some of them, everybody knew that we were married and, and uh, that was fine. Other ones, my wife goes by her maiden name. So mm -hmm. she got there first. I came in a little bit later. So we just never told anybody we were married, you know? So uh, it, it happened though, that we were staying in the same hotel with most of the other consultants and they saw us coming out of the same room. And <laughs> it's like, well, I guess we should tell everybody now. So we did, but yeah, we've been working together since about 2000. That's really impressive. So when do you start talking about work? Do you have any boundaries around, you know, when? Because I know that one of the reasons why my ex-husband and I, didn't work out in the end is because we worked together and we didn't set some of those boundaries. We started talking about work while we were basically waking up in the morning and drinking our first cup of coffee. And wow. I, I really tried to, to get away from that, but it just never worked. It was work was just so all encompassing because we were both so passionate about it. <clears throat> so we, we would try not to talk about work exclusively. Um, you know, we try to set limits on it. When we sit down to dinner, we stop talking about work. It's mm. just about us. How are things going? What are we going to do this weekend? Things like that. Yeah. And we worked separately at different client sites. We would get on the phone in the evening and talk a little bit. How was your day? How was my day? So we do that. Mm. But we we try to make sure that we, we limit it because it can be overwhelming if that's the only topic of conversation, especially when we're working in the same company, working for the same client on the same project. It's hard not to you know, uh, talk about things sometimes. Well, we try to be real conscious about it and make sure that we stop talking about work at a certain time. And on the weekends, the phones go down, the computers go down, and and we just have fun, go out and play. Yeah, and you're traveling around together as 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 well, and and you're sharing space, like really really close space as well. I Absolutely, have to say, yeah. I just take my hat off to you because I that's one thing that I've never been able to do. I would I really need my own space. <clears throat> So you've got, wife, yeah, she likes her own space too. Um, so we try to accommodate that, but yeah, since, uh, March of last year, we started we digital nomads. So we've been traveling around the U S uh, staying about a month in each location, staying at Airbnb properties. Um, I don't think we would last long if we were in a RV. Um, so yeah, we have to set up my office in one bedroom, her office in another bedroom, or one of us takes a kitchen, you know, table or something like that. And we try to keep separate because we're both on conference calls and things all day long. Um, we do take a break at lunch and come and have lunch together. So we'll sit on the couch and talk and everything like that. Not necessarily work, but kind of what things are going on. And then uh, back to our, our rooms. And then again, on the weekends, we try to make sure that we're out doing something. Mm. Um, but it's 
it's tough when you're in that close of a space working together, um, sharing resources sometimes. It it can be tough. So we yeah. have to, you know, real, really be conscious about it. Yeah. So do you sometimes take your relationship issues into work or how do you handle that? Yeah, we try not to. Um, early, early on, we were on one project where she was the project manager and I was reporting to her yeah. and she said, you need to do X. And I talked back to her in front of other people. And that was not good. We had a con long conversation about that in the evening. We try not to take things like that in into the the clients. A lot of times we try to keep it all separate. We don't tell them about our um, outside life, what we do or anything like that, um, just to maintain that professionalism. Um, so yeah, it's, it gets tough every once in a while. Yeah, we try to try to be real conscious of that. Because I, I mean, I know people who absolutely don't tell anybody that they're a couple yeah. and they, they make they make really damn sure that they do not talk about personal issues or any topics at work. I mean, I've, I've actually met a woman who didn't even tell people that she had children. I mean, wow. you know, that was how sure. p p private she was. Um, but it, it was about, it's about the ability. And I think you've got that to be able to share some things, but not to go into too much detail. And also the ability to separate out those personal relationships at work when you're working with other people from the professional ones, because I, I know that that was one thing that my my ex-husband and I were re really clear about is we do not talk about issues we have it with each other, with right. other people at work, because you don't want people to take sides. Right. You don't want people to sit there and say, oh, I now have to work with this person professionally. And now I've got this, per you know, their partner's opinion about that. And th obviously that that opinion may weigh quite heavily in either in favor or against the other person. And it gets really messy. Yeah, it does. And we we try really hard not to bring any of that into work. There have been a few projects where she was working. She's already set up relationships with these people. And she's talked about me, things we're doing on the weekend or something like that. And then something came up that I had the expertise. They couldn't find anybody. And she at least said, hey, my, my husband can come in. So I actually got on the project for about six weeks to help work. Well, they already knew who I was. They knew a little bit about me. Um, so that was kind of awkward. But yeah, I could see how bad that would be if she brought in all my feelings. I snore. I'm I'm a slob. You know, I leave things laying around. If all that came into work, yeah, that would be difficult. Which is all hypothetical, by the way, right? Hypothetical. Absolutely. Yeah. Strictly for the show. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're talking about soft boundaries where, where, where personal life and professional life gets completely mixed up and where date nights probably don't happen because, you know, you're so busy talking about work that you can't talk about anything else. You work on the weekends, you do all of these things. And then there are the rigid boundaries where you keep everything completely strictly private. And um, when you also hide your possibly your relationship from others, whether that's useful or not, that depends on the context, I think. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, we try to be as flexible as we can with things like that, you know, and yeah. kind of play it by ear. There are some strict rules. Like I said, don't talk about the deep personal things between us with other people. Um, but yeah, like I said, we we tried to do a couple projects where she kept her maiden name. And I, you know, so people didn't know right away that we were married, but they saw that we hung around together and talked a lot. So they kind of got to a point where we had to tell them. And now we do. We'll let them know. But we try to keep date nights. I know that's one of the things you brought up. We love date nights. And uh, for, I think it was my birthday last year, Lisa gave me a book and it's all about date night adventures. Oh, and, and you open the book and you choose uh, one of the topics. There's a scratch off area that gives you the scenario. And then you heal the little strip and open up the page. And there's a full recipe that you're supposed to cook together. And it tells you what music to play in the background, what topics, what questions to ask, things to do. We're supposed to, at one point, dress up and uh, at do some crazy things, but it's all about date night, just getting, taking everything else off the table and just being together. And uh, oh, we do that once a week. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And have you repeated one yet or are there enough for you? Uh, no, we're still going through the book. It's a oh, it's a wonderful. great book. And I really, I really recommend them. There's a lot of different dates. Some are just the two of you at home. Some are with guests. Some of them, you pack a picnic and go somewhere. One of the nights we had to get up on the roof and look at the stars while we had some, you know, astral type music playing in the background and just stare up and talk about our dreams and everything like that. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot mm -hmm. of fun. So the important thing is, is to recognize that there is potential for professional jealousy or envy sure. um, or, again, that feeling of missing out. You know, you could sabotage your career goals for a relationship quite easily. 
mm-hmm. or the ability to say, you know, we're in this together and, and really defining why you're doing it and supporting each other. And I'm hearing you're doing that really, really well. That's one thing we've tried even from the very, very beginning. Um, we actually wrote out our a mission statement for our relationship. You know, what do we want together to make sure we're on the same page? A lot yeah. of people just kind of go into marriage and halfway down the road, they realize, oh, I want to go this way and you want to go that way. And it's not going to work. We talked about all of that and we committed to each other that, you know, your career is important. If you get a, a, an amazing offer, I'll follow. If I get a, an amazing offer, you'll follow. And so that's what we do. But it's, we, we do talk about it. Absolutely. I think you have to. Yeah. Well, n- not everybody does that. There's a lot no. of, there's a lot of sliding into certain habits and then all of a sudden you're interested in a situation that doesn't work anymore. And it, and then in a relationship where somebody, when, where you work together, it can, it can be that the, you, you never put the toothpaste cap back on or you never, mm-hmm. you, you, and then again, or you never support me or you micromanage me. Mm-hmm. You, do you, I mean, I hear you doing all of that, but I mean, for everybody who's watching and listening, sure. I think we need to say, we need to list all the pitfalls that people can fall into. Yeah and how to avoid them. So there's on one hand, there's this overlap of do you I mean, like being mindful of competencies. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that I know that my, my ex husband and I did really, really well, we both had our areas of expertise, and he had his and I had mine. And when we worked together it was really clear, who was the leader, like yeah. you were giving feedback, and you were giving support, but you were not taking over the project. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've had to those situations where uh, going in the door, we kind of stop and say, okay, you're the boss and I'm following your lead, you know, whatever. And, and that's fine. And we'll do that. And there are times where I have an expertise where she'll ask, you know, me to help out on something. And uh, yeah. So a kind of clear delineation between these are your, you know, topics and these are mine. So, but we talk about those. Yeah. So that gets really interesting when you're working in a larger organization and you're working with, as you said, I mean, you said your wife fired you in order to be able to date you, but not everybody does that. I mean, I have worked with couples where one was the boss of the other and it didn't matter whether it was the the woman, the man, the man, the woman, you know, whoever the the partner was, um, Mm -hmm. you know, know, sexual um, orientation taken completely aside, but right. when one person was more at the top than the other, they had to negotiate the boundaries around that because mm-hmm. there's a perception out there. And this is, this is not, this is who is at the top, who is the top dog in the relationship. Right. And that, right. that could be not even the boss, but that could be the person who just has more impact, who shows up more by dominating. And I'm using the word deliberately, but mm-hmm. you know, taking the, perf- the the personal relationship into work and making sure that people get who is the more dominant partner. Right. And yeah, and and my wife is definitely, I don't, dominant, I, it's a little tough. But yes, she has those top skills. She is used to working at the, the sea level and above. She's worked with generals. She's worked with doctors. I mean, at the very top of the game, she knows organizational change management is her experience. So she's at that strategic level very, very much. So I defer to her on those. When it comes to coaching and some of the softer skill things, she defers to me. Mm. You know, how do we, how do we bring this up? How do we uh, counsel this person to help them, you know, in this area and stuff like that? She'll defer to me. I was brought in to do uh, some facilitation for a nonprofit. And since that's kind of my area of expertise, she came in to support me. And so mm. she kept quiet in background and, you know, kind of fed me information during the breaks and things like that. Um, but yeah, we, we try to make sure if she's the one that they're looking at is she's the top dog. No problem. Yeah. No problem at all. Yeah. Because there, there are people out there who think that they have to make sure that they look good by having the perfect relationship. Right. Right. And it's, it's managing a reputation. And so if you're not managing your partner at work, then it could reflect badly on you. And so the partner has to perform to the same level, to the same level of excellence, to the same level of capability, but also to the same level of managing life and all of that. And so then it becomes almost like a social media exercise that you live every single day and you have to manage and can get very stressful. I mean, I have seen couples that, that do that and it can backfire completely and it can be very successful depending on how people manage it. Sure. Yeah, that's, uh, and like I said, we we 
we probably struggle with that once in a while, you know, because you can't help it. If something really big has happened and you're driving into the client site that morning, it's hard not to, you know, let that. But we try never to involve the people around us. They know something happened, but they don't need to know the details of it. And we work together when we need to and then, you know, go back to the hotel and pick it up where we left off, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we really try to make that separate. It's well, I think we both and I, you, we both agree on the fact that if you don't set those boundaries consciously mm -hmm. and you can't expect just because you've got a great relationship, you're going to work together really well, or just because you have a great, you, you work together really well and you get, get into a relationship that's going to transfer as well. So what are you, what, are, what do you suggest to people? What are the minimum things that people should, should negotiate? <laughs> Definitely open communication. We mm -hmm. talk about this all the time. Um, we have um, separate responsibilities. You know, there are certain areas that she's the expert. I leave those to her. There's other areas where I'm the expert. I leave those to me. I'm, um, mm -hmm. say, more artistic, so a slide presentation. I'll make sure everything is lined up the way it's supposed to. I'll change the fonts to make them all the same. The colors all jive, because that's my area. That's kind of my background. When it comes to, to the strategic side, She's up there getting the vision from the leaders, getting the plan put together and everything like that. So, you know, that's her area. So definitely we have separate duties. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about even in at home, you know, I do the cooking. So the kitchen is my area. That's my domain. So we know that we keep that separate. That's my area to, to work with and stuff. Um, our schedules are different. I'm an early riser. I like <laughs> to get up and get things rolling. She likes to sleep in a little bit, but then she'll go later in the evening. Mm -hmm. So we've just that's the way you work. This is the way I work. So I make sure that my, while we're on the road here, my office is a little bit further away from the bedroom so I can get up and get going without having to disturb her or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think just talk about those things. You have to have that open communication. Exactly. Where are we? What do we want out of this? And how are we going to keep that, that, uh, that separateness? I had a guy tell me years ago, it's kind of like driving a taxi. You have the plexiglass between the driver and the passenger. Mm -hmm. And going in consulting, you have to have that plexiglass a little bit to where mm -hmm. everything on this side is is personal, and then everything out there is the the work for the client. So we try to try to do that. And if we're struggling, we'll take a walk, kind of talk through it a little bit. How are we going to approach this? Um, but yeah, I would I would suggest just a lot of conversation. I yeah. think you have to be really open about it. Yeah. No, I don't know if you've got. Do you have children? No, I've got a, a daughter who's grown up and married. Okay. Yeah. All right. So not, but neither of us have children, but we, we know people who have children. And I know that, and, and you probably come across that in your coaching as well, that people don't necessarily negotiate when they work together, who is actually, and, and it doesn't matter even if people don't work together. Let me put it this way. This is a scenario of, of an encounter is that one person is responsible for children. Now you said mm. you you do the cooking, but when it comes to, comes to children, there's, and it's generally, well, quite honestly, it's the mother, right? Where, where somebody is then responsible for the children, and is is, is is and it's expected to drop everything if something happens, right? And even if even if both people are involved in in work at the same time to the same degree, one of the per people has to drop everything to go and take care of things, and mm -hmm. that can lead to a lot of resentment because that you know they the what I'm trying to say is I'm articulating stuff that I haven't really talked about right. is that. People, when when a couple doesn't really work together, but doesn't really negotiate the the home front, and children and other relationships, and it just sort of gets there's an expectation that there's still the traditional way in which we're handling things. For example, then women often take the bigger part of that, and and sometimes they, that sense of unfairness. Whether it's, you know, whoever is the partner who's taking on more, doesn't matter. But it needs to be negotiated. Yeah. So that would be something that I would recommend to people. It's like, do not expect that just because you're living together and working together, or even working in a company where you are in the same building, you things will run automatically and you can just go with the flow. It's not going to work. No. No, you have to have that flexibility. And if something happens, we always look at each other and say, do you want to take this or do you want me to do it? Yeah. It's like, so okay, I have two meetings coming up, so I need you to take care of it. I'm on. And, yeah. you know, I'll jump in there and take whatever it is. It's the it's it's so important to really sit down and talk about 
the different areas that are affected by work, that are affected by the relationship, the overlap between them, what things do you want to discuss in public, which ones you don't, where do you expect that you work together, where do you work separately, mm -hmm. um, and then also decide who you are in the relationship and who you are in at work. I mean, do you have separate work and relationship goals? I mean, you said that you will support mm -hmm. each other, but do you also sure. have completely separate ones where you're going, that's my shtick? I, I think so to a degree. Yeah. And I think that is important to, to know going in, you know, to the relationship, how, where, where's that dividing line going to be? If this is more important to her then fine, I'll support you. Mm -hmm. I have, I have stopped projects in order to support her on her project or something like that. Right. Um, so having, like I said, the, the expertise or whatever that she may need, but we make sure that we have the, the separation. She has a goal that she wants to accomplish I'm getting ready to retire. So my goals are pretty much done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm flexible. Like I said, if, if they need her to go somewhere, I'll travel with her. That's okay. fine with me. Or take care of things at home if that's what needs to happen. Right. You know, so there's that that flexibility there. Yeah. yeah. So what I maybe I should I didn't express myself clearly. I, I I totally get that. But I'm talking about hobbies, for example, or relationships. So what I found really difficult when I was with my ex-husband is that we would just spend so much time working together. And even if we were working in separate areas, we would come together and it was this expectation that we now, because we didn't, we, we spend so much time working that we also spend our free time together. Yeah. And so we would, we, and I had to actually say, there are certain things that I really like to do alone. And I like to have friendships where I do not, we don't show up as a couple, but where we go, where I go and I have a relationship with a person and you have friends that I don't necessarily have the same kind of closeness with. And that, that we have that same, that, that separate identity because we were so enmeshed in, in everything that I needed to have that sense that this was my thing. And I know that I came to a place where I was doing Pilates and the reformer one where you really work out and it was just so it was great I love doing it and then then my ex-husband decided that he wanted to join me there mm. because it was he I was raving about it and and so yeah. he joined me and there was this sense of oh, that was yeah, my this was thing. mine right yeah and now we're sharing that too right does it have to be that way you know or yeah. you know, driving everywhere together, you know, did we really need to have one, only one car or could we have two cars? So there was some more independence, you know, all of those things I think would be really useful to discuss. And I learned some of these things yeah. the hard way. Yeah. When we were consulting, if she was on one project at one company and I was across the country, mm -hmm. we had our own things. We do our own things. Now we're traveling together. We're staying in the same place together. We're working same times together and stuff we have to make allowances. So mm. she just went the other day and had a spa day all to herself. Um, there are times where I'll, I'll go off on the weekend and do some off-roading or something like that to give her time away and me time away. So yeah, I think it's important to make sure that um, you're doing that. She has her friends on her project. She keeps in touch with a lot of people she's worked with before, uh, past uh, clients, and they'll communicate and cards to each other and everything like that. I think that is important mm. to keep those relationships up because they're important to her career. Um, yeah. but yeah, we do try to make sure that we have that separation. So mm -hmm. yeah, she wants to go for a spa day. I'm not going to go <laughs> have my, you know, <laughs> manicure, pedicure. Um, so I'll find some other thing to do, or I'll just hang out at home. But yeah, I think that is important. Definitely talk about what those boundaries are. Mm. And that also applies to people who work, you know, who work in the same company together, because mm -hmm. it means, you know, do you, do you spend, you, you go home together in the same car? Do you have to align your schedules in order to make that fit? Um, so that's that mean, you know, one of you has to take work home with you and you can't and then, you know, the other person can't do what they want to do. It's like, does one of you want to go to the gym after work or do they have to now not are they not going to be able to do that because you drive home together or any kind of other arrangements that that really bring everything into such a togetherness that it's really difficult to have individual goals, individual passions, individual relationships. And I'm not saying that people have to have very separate lives. I lived in Asia for a long time and, and people there, the, the, you know, when people work together and they have very different, a very different social contract. So couples mm -hmm. not necessarily spend a lot of time socially together, but in the Western world, there's this expectation that, 
you know, we're doing all of these things together. And, and you know, I, I said at one point, you know, I, I really like having separate bedrooms. And everybody was like, oh, you can't do that. And I'm like, why not? Yeah. I was 15 at the time. So I was said, you know, when I get married, I want to have my own bedroom. No, you can't do that. And it was just, why not? You know, so these these needs need to be need to be discussed. Sure. Yeah, because like I said, I'm an early riser and mm. she's not. So yeah. we have to make allowances, you know, getting to the office if we're going to the same place. We don't have to have lunch together every day. Um, if she's going to go out with somebody, she'll get a ride home, you know, mm. back to the hotel. Um, I'll go out and do my own thing. So yeah, we have to work through that too. Cause it is, it is tough. I love spending a lot of time with her and she loves spending time with me, but she really loves her downtime and her quiet time and her separate time. So yeah, you have to make sure you build that in. Yeah. And you have to discuss it because I mean, I know that when my ex-husband and I got first got married, he moved into my one bedroom apartment before we found something else. And, um, and I, I like my solitude and I love reading and I can read for three, four hours nonstop. And so he would, I would, I would say, I'm going to go and read. And he would come into the bedroom and, 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 and he would say, would you like a cup of tea? Would you like a, you know, would you like, would you like? And it was like, I had to sit down with him and say, look, when I say that I want to be alone, I mean that I really want to be alone. And I get that you, you come from a really caring place and you want to support and provide Maybe you could channel that into making dinner or lunch or something. But if I if I if I really want to be alone, I don't need you to check in with me every t- every five minutes. And I I really get that this comes from a place of care, but it's not working. Sure. And no, it sounds about- like me because I do the same thing. I do the same things, but I've had to learn. When she says this is my time, that's your time. I'll go do something else. I'll go out work on the car, whatever it happens to be. Give her that time off. And especially traveling now, we have to have those little breaks every mm. once in a while. So, yeah, we've had to learn, but it, it's definitely talking, you know, lay it all out. Don't be honest about it. Just yeah. come right out and say, yeah. Yeah. So the important thing, as you said, it's be, being flexible. It's talking about it. It's getting really clear on where you stand. And it's an ongoing process. It's not something where you sit down and, and write, a, write a list of, you know, these are the boundaries we're going to keep. These are the topics we're not going to talk about. This is, it's it's probably going to be one of those, we're not going to do that one again. That didn't yeah. work. Right? Yeah, But the, the more proactive you can be about these things, the better. Definitely. And she knows that I like the date night thing, mm. you know? Um, so she got that book and and that's been fabulous for us. Cause like I said, we'll plan one night a week that we just do that. So we buy all the special food to to do the special meal and, and work on it together. And usually I'm in the kitchen alone. Well, this time we're in there together. We're kind of, you know, bumping up against each other and everything. It's nice, but we plan those things specifically to give us that time together. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now we definitely need to get the book. Yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. So I'll send you the information on it. Yes, please. And we'll put that, we'll put that into the comment field. Um, so, oh God, we could talk about this for a very long time, couldn't we? There are so many different aspects, but I think we can summarize it and and, and communicate, communicate, communicate. Don't take anything absolutely. for granted. No. And don't just assume, mm. you know, um, talk about it. I, I like to get up early and work. I like to work in a quiet space. She likes to get up a little bit later. She has um, a video going over here and she's got her book, you know, on, on, in her earbuds and she's music going and, and the TV going and things. I can't work that way. So yeah. we understand that's your way. This is my way. And, and we do it, but we had to talk through that to make sure that it was okay. Cause for a while in our old house, we had uh, uh, partner desks and we mm-hmm. would work right across from each other. Yes. That didn't last. No. <laughs> So yeah, definitely talk and set set those boundaries and stuff. You'll you'll enjoy everything a lot more. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it'll save the relationship too. So I mean, we should have done this video about three years ago when people went into lockdown and all of a sudden they mm. were working together and living together. And a lot of people did not cope because they had, they literally had, they were working at the dining room table opposite each other. And I've had clients and coaching sessions where I said, so have you got some privacy? And they go, no, my partner is sitting opposite me. And I'm like, yeah, maybe yeah. not that conducive for a coaching session. Yeah. But it, it, we're working more and more in conditions where even if we're not working together in the same company, but working together at home or from home remotely, setting up all of those boundaries and making sure that you you get time alone, you get you get to have 
the lunch together, but also the lunch alone, and that you that you mm. create a schedule that works for both of you, incorporating children, negotiating yes. that, making sure that not one person takes the brunt of the housework and the children and all of that, right. but um, really talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and you know we try to we try to talk about those things. If something comes up, we stop and say, okay, how do you want to do this? It's yeah. more important to you than it is to me. Then yeah. I'll defer to you. So like I said, I, I'm in the kitchen. I'm doing most of the cooking. So everything in the kitchen is set up the way that I like it. Mm -hmm. I do the grocery shopping. So I get the things that I want and yeah. she's fine. Go do your thing in the kitchen. Um, so yeah, we we talk about it. If we bump into each other, we'll, we'll stop, work mm -hmm. it out and uh, come yeah. up with those boundaries. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alan. This was great. I mean, I hope it's good, giving lot of people lots of thought, food for thought for you know, whether you work together in the same organization, whether you work together having the same organization in the same organization that's yours, you work from home, you work in a company, it doesn't matter. Start thinking about what matters in your relationship and how do you want to negotiate those those topics. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Sure, absolutely. Wonderful. And I look Great forward to talking with, with you offline. Definitely. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. And thank you for being here, Harlan. And um, I look forward to seeing everybody next time when we talk about another really interesting topic that um, is supposed to really stimulate your thoughts about what boundaries are. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do.